Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of the Scratch the Track podcast presented by the Dude and Grim Show. I'm the Dude. And I am Grim. And today we are here to discuss Hold It Up, Dude, Figure 8 by Elliot Smith. Don't hate on Figure 8. No. You most certainly are. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, Before we get into it. Yeah, oh yeah, go on. Before we get into it, yes, yes. Before we get into it, we just want to remind everyone that this is the podcast where we pick some of your favorite albums. Just like Elliot Smith's figure eight, we talk about the album and we kind of go through each track on the album. And ultimately, at the end, we decide what track we should scratch off. Now, that doesn't mean we don't like the track. But back in the day, Grim, as you're about to say, what used to happen to your favorite discs and CDs and vinyl records? So what we try to do is look at it uh, from a from a perspective of what did the album mean when it came out? How was it recorded? Uh, Interesting things like that. And then we try to to throw in that dash of reality, which is if you had this album, be it on vinyl or CD, at some point you probably got to a place where one of the tracks got a scratch in it and would skip. Right? And so the game that the Duder and I always played was, okay, so we talk about our favorite albums, what we liked, maybe what we didn't like, and ultimately what we didn't like becomes not even so much what we didn't like. What could we live without? If you could choose the track that skipped, that got scratched, what one would you choose? And that's the crux of it. Exactly. And so, Grim, right after everyone goes ahead and like, subscribe, and comment below. Please let us know, comment below what track you would scratch on the album. Now, you can do it now, or you can wait till the end of the episode after we go through each track. But please let us know, because uh, it sparks up some really interesting debates and conversations. Yeah, and and that's the whole whole bit about it. I mean, neither one of us think that we're right. It it, it, it becomes a matter of opinion. Oh, I do. No, uh, I'm right. (laughs) I don't know, man. We've listened, we've seen some of those albums in the past, and I think you don't get a what the the fuck is that? Unless, um, you know... Unless you don't do shit, unless. Yeah. Unless what? Unless you do it first. Yeah. So, right. with that said. Without without w- further ado. Without further ado, Figure Eight by Elliot Smith. So. His fifth album, man. Fifth. Is this, let me ask you right off the back. Is, is this your favorite Elliot Smith album? No, it is not. Okay. Um, okay. And I hate to say this because I think a lot of true Elliot's myth fans would give me uh what the fuck is that for for yeah. saying this but dude my personal favorite is actually from a basement on the hill okay um and, and i think it's like it's it's because to me from a basement on the hill was like where he would have gone And I know that some people may feel like it's a sacrilege because he didn't go there. But if you listen to figure eight and then listen to that album, it's like the the folks who helped out with those recordings on from a basement on the hill. I feel like they had a pretty good idea of where this was going. And I think they took it to that step. So that's well. Well, it is cool because if you look at obviously his first album and then as he's he's progressed, this is his fifth album. Um, there is a progression in his sound, a progression in the production. I mean, you can tell right away from his first album, which is primarily acoustic stuff, oh, acoustic. but phenomenal. I mean, it's just, I, I, it's one of my favorite. It might be actually be my second favorite album of his. I, I like it so much. Like the self-titled but, Elliot Smith? Yeah. Oh, oh okay. yeah. I love it, man. Love what about it. New Moon? Um, Do you ever listen? New Moon's great. <clears throat> so, yeah, New Moon is is great, um, but it's it's... What uh, what is it? Because we talked about this on the uh, the Phoebe uh, Bridgers album, or uh, that we just talked about, because um, she was heavily inspired by New Moon uh, in in her Punisher album, and I believe that's New Moon is more um, compil. It's more of a compilation album of some some other rarities and some B sides. Like it even has an alternate version of Miss Misery, which is a song that he played at the Academy Awards and the Goodwill Hunting soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's. Um, yeah, I'd be interested to see what fans think of that album as well, because it's kind of in a in a certain way, it's kind of similar to um, from Basement on a Hill. Where it's, uh, you know, after his death is kind of when it when it came out. So. Yeah. The only difference that I would say is I feel like um, 
in New Moon, I think that the recordings were kept more true to form with how he did them. Whereas sure. from a basement on the hill was, you know, there there was some embellishments made, albeit I think really good ones. Um, but there's there's also another version too on New Moon of Pretty Mary Kay, which oh okay. may be worth noting. But either way, cool. Either or, you. either or, either or, <laughs> either or. Um, well, dude, this album's pretty interesting. It was recorded in a, a bunch of places, some famous places. Um, some was at uh, Sunset Sound, somewhere at Abbey Road in London, like Capital cool. Studios. Like, yeah, I mean, he he went some places in in this album. Sonora Studios. Um, yeah. And and I really I, I think that's cool because I, I think they did a good job of I don't hear, I guess, in my mind, like I couldn't like pin a track and say, oh, well, this is obviously from a different Completely session. It different, all sounds yeah. very cohesive to me. Absolutely. No, it does. It definitely does. Um, well, it's interesting because even the title, like uh, figure eight, Elliot Smith said he he liked the idea kind of this of this self-contained endless pursuit of perfection. And, you know, the object is not to stop or arrive anywhere. It's just, you know, to make things as beautiful as it is it can. And that's, you know, but, the, the figure eight and just keep going. Yeah, no, I know. I, it's infinity. Right. But but another mm-hmm. thing that goes along with that is I, I believe that he also said in that that he thought that the pursuit of perfection was and I'm paraphrasing, I'm not directly quoting, but was not art, so to speak. Sure. Yeah, because I, I think you you could also say that sometimes having I don't know if I would necessarily want to call them mistakes, but um, imperfections, you, imperfections give it authenticity. Yes, and that yes, gives they do. it sort of you know that sort of I guess soul and emotion, and that's really if you've listened to Elliot Smith and you're a fan of him, that's that's the crux I feel yeah. like of his music is is. Man, there's a lot going on there. Oh, and, I, I, and he's a, he's a great songwriter, a great lyricist, an excellent yeah. guitar. I mean, you could say I was going to ask you about that. How do you feel about him as a you know a guitarist? I um, think he's he's I mean, a really good guitarist because um, some of the stuff that he does were like his finger picking. I mean, mm-hmm. in my best days, I probably could have done that like effortless effortlessly yeah but now i i don't i don't have those chops anymore and when i listen to him regardless of that it's it's just very well done yeah. um and, and that's the thing i i mean in in the in the other guitar parts that he puts in they're they're the right parts the right notes sure and yeah. he he does a good job because in this album i mean holy cow He's credited with, you know, the guitars oh. and then piano, drums yeah. on several tracks, Hammond organ, pump organ, which, dude, pump organ, those those are some beastly instruments to play. Chamberlain, which is the cousin of the Mellotron, which we'll get into, harpsichord, orchestra bells. I mean, he just, he he's a true musician where where he doesn't say I'm a guitarist. This is what I play. Right. Like he, he does, he does it all. And he, he does it very well. Does it very well. Yeah. You know, one thing in, in not, uh, I don't think this is like a big deal or anything. We need to take a deep dive in, but I feel like I call him a musician. And oh yeah. I feel like, a, I feel like a lot of people who are solo artists, they are called singer songwriters. Yes, and I I feel like that kind of short changes them a little bit. I mean that true. I, I don't know. I but I maybe, some like, I, maybe some of them are. Maybe some of them. I you know, and I I they can't are. speak to whomever whomever we're talking about, but I think maybe some of them are. But he is not. Yeah, I just feel like there's like I just think of him. I think of musician. You just rattled off all the you know, instruments and stuff that he plays. And I just feel like that kind of short changes him. Um, well, sure. Just, uh, and an incredible musician. Yeah. And one thing I was going to mention is, you know, I think a lot of people uh, only associate Elliot Smith with the acoustic guitar and singing. Sure. And I, I love that, that part of what he does, but I feel He's like great at it. 
I feel like this album is almost like Elliot Smith meets the Beatles. Yeah. Uh, you know, is- like, like the backing vocals in this album are just spectacular. They're beautiful. Killer. Great. Like great. Really harmonies. good. Yeah. His great vocals look. Good drummer. Are, yeah, exactly. His, yeah. I mean, his vocals are amazing too. Uh, very interesting voice. He, he has such a, he can project, but he has such a soft voice in kind when of the he, way, yeah, when he wants the way to, yeah. he sings. Yeah, it's 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 really nice and uh, just like just pleasant to listen to. And and you know, looking at him, you, you probably wouldn't be like, oh, that's what this guy sounds like. But it's um, yeah, uh, very he very looks he voice. looks rough, like he should be in a punk band. A little, yeah, he does definitely right. And right, he, he totally was does. in a band prior to his solo career called Heat Miser. That was, yep. I'm not gonna say punk, but but I think a little more harder than what he is kind of right probably yeah i just again and if people haven't seen the documentary um uh, heaven adores you is a phenomenal documentary about him uh very well done great interviews a lot of um i i really liked how they did some of the things that where they had um they used a lot of his uh there was an interview i think in a radio show or a couple of radio shows and they used kind of his voiceover is sort of a narration to kind of show the progression of him um telling telling the story almost in his own words and then he had interviews with other people and stuff it was yeah it's pretty cool it's you know again it's a uh, a sad story for for most people who don't know his story you know we, we're, we don't need to get into all that but um you know unfortunately he left this world too soon um but he uh was just a you know tremendous musician and um it would have been interesting to see where he would have, you know, gone. I mean, even after uh, from a basement on a hill, you know, onward, because, know. again, you, you see a clear transition over the years from his albums. And in this one, I feel like I feel like, you know, I, XO, like I, I like XO, but I just feel like this was just to me in his songwriting, Next level. The, the, the production. There's so many layers going yeah. on in different instruments. I just feel like he really... Uh, you know, took it up uh, to to another level. So yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm just very I'm really impressed with with that progression. So um, now, one thing, Grim, that we can talk about a little bit is, um, you know, the the cover of the album is is kind of become famous, and there's mm-hmm. been a lot of a lot of tributes done after he passed away because this this painting is off of a building in in Los Angeles on Sunset. And, Correct on sunset, yeah. And so the photographer, Autumn DeWild, she she had seen this painting on the building, and I think she said initially, like she thought it was kind of weird. She didn't know about it, and then she wanted to do something with it, and then it just kind of worked out where they were trying to figure out a what to do for the cover because she was even asking Elliot Smith, like, ah, you know, what do you want the cover to be? And yeah, and, yeah. And, he, and he said to her, he was like, you know, everybody, everybody, when they think of me, they think I'm just like sitting in a dark place in a dark room where there's dark furniture. And it's just like so dreary. And he's yeah. just like, that's just not, that's not it. And so I think this is, this is really kind of cool how they, um, they captured this year, and it also fits very well with figure eight because even just looking at the cover itself, it looks it's, like it it's could like be part sort of, of the figure the, eight. The yeah, yeah, eight, yeah. Right? I know, yeah, so. I know. That's what's really yeah. cool. And yeah. and I like that when you read about that, it's like it says that fans still go up to this wall and they'll write things and inscribe things, and then at some point, fans will also go up to the wall and like repaint it and like make it new again, which. Yeah. I, I think all, all that is really cool. Yeah. Well, I also wanted to talk about just real quick. The, so yeah, this yeah. book. Um, so Autumn DeWild, the the photographer who took uh, those photos that that you see on the cover, I was able to get this book uh, years ago. I mean, I've had it for a long time, and basically, it has all of her. Um, I don't say all, but tons and tons, hundreds of photos that she shot of Elliot Smith hmm. um, from different times in his career and his life. And there's a whole section um, dedicated just to kind of the photo shoot that they did for this album cover. Um, so different outtake photos that they oh, could cool. use for the cover and whatnot. Yeah. So it is pretty cool. And then there's sort of inner, I don't know if I call them interviews, but conversations like Beck Hansen, he did the the forward for it. Um, and there's a conversation with, with him and some other people just kind of back and forth and other people that Elliot Smith 
new throughout uh, the years. So if you're an Elliott Smith fan, highly recommend picking this picking this up. It also includes in the back this five song uh, live at Largo. That's the place where he 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 had played. Um, I think oh, cool. live many times. But it has five songs. Actually, a CD. I didn't. I don't even know if I knew it was in there, dude. But it's still like in the back. Oh, of, that's awesome. Of Unboxing. Has, this is an unboxing, unboxing. too. Yeah. It has unboxing. angels, um, uh, between the bars, Clementine, clouds, and all my rowdy friends have settled down. Are the the tracks off of it? So I don't even have a CD player that I could probably play this in. So I'll just I'm just gonna leave it there. Send it to Anyways. me. I got one. Yeah. All right, Grim. I, I think uh, I think we could probably get into this one. Well, before close, we do, I want to talk about some of the reviews, um, mm. the critical reception, um, as Wiki would put it. Some yeah. of the review or the reviews that came out to date. Now, there's some of these reviews I really agree with, such as NME, which called it Smith's best effort to date. Which I think it was. Uh, Spin wrote, the record is not a disappointment. It's a progression. I also think that's fair. Um, AV Club wrote, figure eight is even better than previous records. A strong collection of lush, densely arranged power pop and in. in, in What's that in, word? Inib- inib- inibitably <laughs> intimate ballads. Wow. I. The. That's made up. I'm familiar with. I feel like when I'm playing words with friends on my phone and you play against like the bots, like that's one of those words that they would it's use. And you're like, choose. is that even a fucking word? Anyways, um, it runs the game. I guess where I wanted to go is Pitchfork because usually I think Pitchfork has really good things to say, and I and I feel like that would to me I would view that as a go to source for. Kind you of know. in line with yeah, yeah, sure. For the most part. But in this I have a case feeling that's not in this case, yeah. No. Pitchfork said figure eight ultimately isn't as good a record as XO or either or, though the man's not out of the picture yet. What the fuck is that shit? What the fuck is that shit? Hey, dude, it's seriously. Like, it's like he came out with an album and they're like yeah you know it's not that great so maybe you know he's just not going to make it anymore actually no yeah i'm sorry like dude if you didn't hear this for what it is like honestly i hate to say but go fuck yourself like how do you not listen to this record and think wow this is a this is just a stunning record i mean many would call it a masterpiece of course. So, you know, anyways, that's could... that's what I wanted to touch on because yeah, that I... was that was one thing that honestly bothered me when when I was mm-hmm. reading stuff about this. Like, and I understand that again, these are opinions, and they are my belly, opinions, belly and, and they are also the opinions of the reviewer. Mm-hmm. But I kind of think that the reviewer was off here. Just saying. Yeah. I. Well, it's tough because you know not to get on too big of a tangent here but it's when people write these reviews first of all i mean they they probably only listened to it a couple of times and you, to me that's why again that's why when even when we do our first impression episodes then it's not really reviews it's that's what we call it our first impressions because for me i gotta have it for a while i have to yeah, listen to it a few for a few times maybe put it down for a bit and then listen to it again come back to it before i can give i feel like a true honest opinion yes. unless we're talking about the foo fighters new album medicine at midnight which is awful but that's a whole side thing and <laughs> you know i just think i just think you need that time with it and you know so there's a part of me that maybe doesn't blame them or the reviewers I sometimes do. because they just had, but at the same time, that's your job. I, I, I don't know. Uh, but the, but the thing is, and and this is this is something that I struggle with, and and I would specifically cite the band Tame Impala because yeah. I loved their first album, Inner Speaker, so much. I was like, holy shit! Thank God, there's a band that's making rock music, right? Yes. And then. You know, the next album, Lonerism, was a little different. And then they basically started doing the same shit as everybody else. Now, I would 
I would have accepted that for even like one or two albums, but that's just kind of what they do. But at the same time, I get the progression. Like they want to do something that they want to do that's different. Even if I don't like it, but I don't understand what there isn't to like here. Yeah. Because I, there's I, still I there's still the basic acoustic singer songwriter stuff here, but he's mm-hmm. also showing you like I I have bigger ideas. Yeah, I mean, dude, there's some heavier, rockier songs more than he had ever done before. And maybe we can get into the tracks here and Yeah, second. yeah, sure. Talk and and not even those, not but. even rockier, just like just the depth. The sure. depth in general is just there, there. The, the 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 layers that he mm-hmm. uses, you know, I I think. Yeah. yeah. It's, so I'm, sorry, I'm, I didn't I'm, mean I'm, to go off I'm, on yeah. a tangent, but I, I feel we like on multiple tangents. I I'm ready to get into the tracks now. Yeah, I hope we let's go off on a tangent and talk about the tracks. So, All right. Son um, of Sam. So yes, Son of Sam. Does anything stand uh, out to you? Well, what stands out to me is that Elliot Smith said this that this song is specifically not about the serial killer David Berkowitz, first of all. Okay. I mean, that should, should be known. But it's it is interesting because you know that that is the title of the song. So um I think I think what stands out to me and just kind of how we just talked about sort of the layers in, in the buildup. This song has a buildup. Yes, that's what I was going to mention. And when the guitar hits, man, it hits. And it hits in a way that I had not heard in an Elliott Smith song, I think, previously. I um, agree. Uh, but but again, that's what, I, and I think you, you touched on oh, That's what I, I think it. is so cool about, like, the intro of it. Is it is it, it, it comes in sort of subtly. Sure. Um, you know. Told the boss off and made my move. My move. Oh, son of yeah. oh dude. It's it's one of my favorite Elliot Smith songs. Um, it's maybe in my top top five Elliot Smith songs of all time. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I don't think I'd put it uh, there, but I, I really okay. like this song. Um, now that we move on to somebody I used to know. Just somebody now, that I... No, that song. <laughs> and, and honestly, I feel like for those people who don't like the progression this kind of harkens back to 100 the stuff that they would be used to Ooh, absolutely no it's, you're right it, it's more acoustic driven definitely more of what listeners are used to um again one thing and we've talked about this offline his use of double vocals right and it just so prevalent in in this song um and he uses them really really well really really well oh yeah and of course great Great words, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, who couldn't relate to this sentiment, right? Uh-huh. And, and I think that that approachability of the lyrics makes things, you know, kind of uh, appreciable. Relatable. And yeah, sure. relatable. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What does he say? You know, I, had, uh, I had tender feelings. I had tender feelings that you made hard, but it's not my it's but it's your heart, not mine. That's scarred. So when I got home. I'll be happy to go. Yeah. When I go home, I'll be happy to go. You're just somebody that I used to know. Um, what, what was and the yeah. other? There was another line in there that I really liked. Um, okay, well, I can't remember. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Up. Um, so, Junk. Junk Bond Trader. I think this is another song for me that's probably in my top five of Elliot Smith songs. Um, this is a good one. What stands out to me is the use of the harpsichord. I mean, right away you okay. can hear that. Yeah. And I was going to, yeah, that's what I thought it was. And it's freaking good. Man. It is. And it. you know, another thing I like is, you know how some of those guitar riffs, they don't just like come in, they sort of fade in. And it's like the use of a volume pedal, which George Harrison does well sometimes okay. in, in Beatles stuff, where it's like you get these nasty electric guitar tones that just kind of, they just kind of fade in gently and and it's it's funny because as a guitar player like one of the things that never really jumped into my pedal board was volume pedal in fact i never had one dude you have a distortion pedal you have delay you have why you have all this shit but like but but the the ability for that guitar to have that nasty tone and like subtly fade in is something that's really cool and i think underappreciated by i don't know everybody many people 
Yeah. yeah. So that that always got me about this song. Yeah, I, I just I love overall that it, this song just rocks. It, I mean, it does. rocks from begin, beginning to end. And again, it's a little bit of a departure from what he's done, but I love the growth. I uh, love the different instrumentation. Um, some of my fa- my favorite lyrics, now I'm a policeman directing traffic, keeping everything moving, everything static. It's like, it's it's interesting because I see, and again, not to get too deep into his, you know, some struggles and things that he had, but I almost feel like this is, he may have wrote this when he was kind of coming out of something and he realized that, hey, I have control. Yeah, and yeah. I, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like, you know, you know, I'm the policeman directing traffic. He, I'm, you know, this is going to go here and there and I'm in control of, of the situation. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I think that's pretty cool. So, um, and again, you, now you switch back to everything reminds me of her, which again, goes back to the acoustic and, and soft. Uh, it's sure. funny how it's back and forth yes. like that a little bit, right? but yeah, I like it. And, and I really like this, um, I really like this song. It it's it's really mm-hmm. heartfelt and um it's to me it's like the classic Elliot Smith sound. 100%. Yeah, cuz I mean to me what stands out is is just the the way his voice matches what yeah. he's saying and I know. the way he's playing and it's, and um, how it counterpoints the acoustic guitar. Mm, in in yeah. a, a very different way, but a very similar way, kind of like Nick Drake does. Yes, and yes, how, that, that's a great that, comparison. That 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 feeling really matches. Um, and I like the lyric. And, so sorry if I seem a little out of it, or no, he says. So if I seem a little out of it, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, sorry, sorry, not sorry. Yeah, you came across um, it and lost uh-huh. it. Yeah. Well, what I think is funny is so he has this song. Everything reminds me of her, and then the next song is. Everything means nothing to me. It's just that's kind of a fun little, I don't know, contradiction a little bit. In, in yeah. A way. Uh, now, I I did come upon a video of him playing this song live and oh, he yeah. did a good job. But I mean, you can tell that when they recorded this, it was probably like he took several takes and just honed in on that piano track and then sang over it because when he plays it live, like the timing just isn't is perfect in the. But I get it. I mean, that's that's a. You know, it's funny that you say that because I I think I've seen this live as well many years ago, and and I noticed something similar. It, it not to say that the 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 light that it was bad or it wasn't good, but exactly. There, it's there's something yes i don't say off about it but it's different um and even the way he sings it um the the way like i feel like i know he sings it in a way where like each word almost gets a little louder or something. yeah there's something there's something and, about it but i do love the build-up at the end i i think totally. that that's that's really cool mm, yeah it's it's a very a real real non-traditional song in yeah. structure which, yeah, which sure. he does throughout this album in in little little spots here and there so well now Dude. we get to la grim and i i know you dig this song buddy oh i love this song what, i just what, what is it that's that that you love so much about it the cadence of the guitar playing okay it's like he's and i I don't know if he's if he's picking it or, or uh, with his fingers or a pick, but there's just something about that and the chords he's using. Um, I di- I didn't get out my guitar and and do all that stuff, but um, there's something about how he does that. Um, and and the background vocals. I mean, the, mm-hmm. the way it all like comes together is just. Dude, those background vocals and harmonies, yeah, just like you were just talking earlier, like the Beatles and all that. Oh and yeah, like, I, uh, I mean, it, it's <laughs> all there, like that, like that, that all that's there, and it just, yeah. I don't know. I mean, the way the song kind of just like has that cadence, and then it just didn't, didn't, do 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 do. I mean, yeah. all these, it, like it just, it it comes around so well, and it moves so well, dude. Things I've yeah. never done, cars parked in. I, the lyrics are good. It has some of my favorite lyrics. I can't go home. It's not on my way. Yeah. Like I just, that, that's kind of cool. One that really stands out to me 
uh, is when he says, last night I was about to throw it all away. Mm-hmm. And oh, and then that boom, 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 yeah. boom, that climb up on that bottom street. Oh, that's phenomenal. Well, one thing I noticed, and I feel like with this album, there are some definitely sadder, more melancholy songs, but there's maybe not the the darkness in the sound of the music. Like it, it does yes, have elements of I, that here and there, but it's almost it that comes out lyrically. Whereas I'm like, oh, this is a beautiful song, but then you listen to the words and you're like, whoa, okay, I know. That's I I agree with you. I agree with you. And 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 that's what I think is so brilliant about it is is that not all the music is is, is as dark as the lyrics. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So dude, yeah. in the lost and found honky in bach, found. which I understand why he calls it honky bach because Slash that the, the piano roast. part the is roost. well, the roost is that end part where the it sounds part. like a bunch of reverse kind of stuff, which yeah. I, I think is it's, cool. It's real trippy. Yeah. But dude, the honky Bach part, I I get because it it seems like kind of a Bach ish piano, and and now it doesn't specifically it's got that cite this. Kind of yes, feel to I think it. Yeah, it yeah. I think it's a tack piano, but I don't know yeah, that that's, that's, a, that that's I, credited. Right, I, I figured it it would be. Um, yeah, yeah, because it does. That's the thing that 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 really really stood out to. to and I know, think, if I'm me. not mistaken, is there an accordion in there? I don't. Is accordion credited? I don't see accordion. Oh, maybe that is that the pump organ? Yeah, that's the pump organ. Where it sounds like an accordion going da, 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 da. like okay. where he does the metal. I, I thought it was an accordion, but that's the pump organ. That's got to be that sound. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Well, I, I just think the idea is, you know, he's talking about hanging around in the lost and found. Yeah. It's, I, I feel like that almost sums him up or at least oh, yeah. how sure. he looked at himself. He's like, yeah, you know, I I'm here like, like something that's in the lost and found. It's like, well, yeah, it's in a lost and found bin. Like to see what happens. It's there, but, but you know, the, the person is kind of looking mm-hmm. forward and yeah, it's not where it's supposed to be, but it is there. Now, but. stupidity tries number eight. I like does. I like how this at number one I, I like the title, um, but I really like how it comes in because okay. it comes in very subtly and then it kind of it, it gets a little bit of a pickup and it it I I just I think they do a good job and at the end it's got the build up. Mm-hmm. Well, and we have talked about that a little bit with this album how full his songs get. And yeah, that it, that is something he does really well. He can start off very slow and very simple, subtle, and yeah. then and then before you know it, there's all these things going on, and there's you know strings and the yeah, guitars in there, and and, and this is like, a great what, example what of that yeah. at the end of it. I mean, it's yeah, it's, yeah, really fantastic, dude. Well but, done. Uh, some of the words, dude. The enemy is within. Don't confuse me with him. Uh, the truth is otherwise stupidity tries. I know he's, I I mean, just an amazing lyricist. Uh, He he, he plays, he's one of those musicians who, who's really good at playing with words. Yes. And and that's, yes, absolutely. Appreciate that. Um, the easy way out rent in Tim. Yes. Um, kind of going back to the, what many people would feel like is the characteristic, Elliot Smith sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, I like that because I mean, dude, he, he, who who hasn't known a person or been involved with the? I mean, he, this this is a sentiment that you could yeah. you could yeah. say for a lot of people. Hell, including yourself, sometimes I know Probably. I could. Yeah, um, and I. It'd be interesting to know who in his like his who in his life he's kind of talking about. Here. Oh sure, sure. Um, because if if you watch the um, documentary "Heaven Adores You," they interview a lot of the women that he dated over these years. Yeah, and uh, and, and whatnot. But to me, this sounds like someone who is I don't know if they're they're kind of passing through or maybe they're a little pretentious but the words that stood out to me like i heard you found another audience to bore creative thinker you imagined you were more 
you yeah. know, a new a new body for you to push around and, and pose. It's all about taking the easy way out for you, I suppose. I suppose. To, to me, it seems like someone who's maybe overly pretentious and they're trying to like find someone else who's who's actually yeah. really gifted and kind of latch on to them. Yeah, sure. And and they don't, you know, they're just they don't I really hang fit in or... with them. Yeah, and then they're like, oh well, I'm gonna go find this other person and, yeah. and do that. So that's the easy way uh, out. That's the easy way out. I think we all know one. Or two, yeah. or three, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, we're getting them ten times a day on this podcast. Oh, so everybody, bro. The hanger, they do the hanger ons. Oh, oh just I'll tell you that for that forest guy is the worst. Oh, god. Now, wouldn't Mama be proud? This oh. is one of my favorites on the album. Oh, and dude, it, I love it's, the way he sings it. Oh, it's so oh I do yeah. too. Yeah. And it, and it sounds like like he knew someone who took like this big fancy corporate job that they knew was kind of bullshit and kind of uh-huh. you know. There's a silver lining in the corporate cloud, and yeah, I, dude, yeah. the lyrics are so good, and I love the chord progression. To me, has similar parts to L.A. Like it's not played the same, but there's. The way it climbs and it kind of does that um, with the pretty post you've taken as an NCO of the great pretender. I should think so. Well, dude, yeah. Take it to the jet stream blowing coast to coast, the long stemmed glasses, uh, a movie and a pleasant dream in midair. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, dude. Hey, taking the flights. Yeah. yeah. Not even first class, the private jet, man. Private jet. Oh. Yeah, that's how we do yeah. it. That's how we but do I, it. But I love this song. I, I really mm-hmm. it's one of my favorites on the album. Yeah. Um Color Bar. Dude. The, like the opening line, line is song. all you need to hear. I see color bars when I come. Like <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's not a bad one. That that's that that just says a lot. I don't know. I mean, because anyone can anyone in our of our age group and our generation can picture those color bars on a TV, you know, oh, and I just it's, yeah, like shit like not again. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but dude, this. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, I, you know, I love the the. You know, the kind of the piano acoustic. It's got some With the shakers shaker. going on. Yep. Yeah, the shaker, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah the cool. shaker's big um, in this one. You know, the song moves along, but um, uh, but then there's, I, I think later again, it, the strings come in, right? I like, know. it's one it's of those be- things. It, that it just, gets really beautiful, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the end um, when he sings, you know, everyone wants me to ride into the Oh, sun, but I ain't going to go. But I ain't going to go down, right? Yeah. You know, the other thing I was thinking is where he's like, oh. you're just a dude with a stilted attitude that you learn yeah. from TV. Which is funny that he says you yeah. learn from TV how that comes back to the idea of the color bars because color bars. Where yeah. else do you see those other than old TV? Ooh, old TV. All right, Grim. Happiness. The gondola man. Yeah, this always struck me as kind of weird as just how it starts with that. Bring, you know, like those well, like those strummed out chords. Well, I'll tell you what I think is weird about it. This was the first single from the album. Uh, dude, I, think is I know I, when I read yeah. that, I was kind of like, I, I get that maybe you recorded this before some of the other songs, but man, I would have just sat on this shit for a minute. Yeah, yeah, probably. I, I, mean, I dude, don't know. I wouldn't have made it the lead single, but what no. do I know? I mean, I haven't made figure eight or even anything that fucking matters, but I guess this still wouldn't have been my pick for the lead single. Yeah, I think so. There's so many other strong songs on the album. Mm-hmm. Like Pretty um, Mary Kay. Oh, Pretty Mary Kay. Oh, Dude, God. I love the end of that, how it kind of goes, dun, 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 and it, it ends on the major chord. Oh, that's that's my favorite part. Like, dude, Sounds amazing. I, like, I like the whole song, but, like, dude, just the ending part on that major chord is, is just... Like, that's where my mind just, like, oh, relaxes, you know? Dude. Fucking. You see color bars, huh? Oh, dude, yeah. Bars. I see color bars <laughs> when Pretty Mary Kay ends. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I think this is this is an interesting song because I feel like it has some, kind of some peaks and valleys. 
And yeah. that's when it goes into his arcade uh, orchestration. Yeah, uh, yeah, I sure. Fi- I find is find is really interesting because he can, you know, he can strip everything down, and then all of a sudden build it up, and then he strips it down again, I know. and then it, it it goes like that. And I just feel like this song is a really good example of that. So, oh, I hear uh, you. So then we go on to "I Better Be Quiet Now," which I is better. I feel like it's a very melancholy song, which some of his are, but I feel like one of the more uh, it leans more melancholy than the rest of it, this, it does this album. but yeah and this is one and normally i don't say this but this is one that not a whole lot to me stands out like yeah there's there's nothing really that that i'm like oh my gosh i gotta talk about this yeah absolutely no um I, to me, it's it's from I think that's uh, from a musical perspective. You know, there are when, when I look at the lyrics and everything, um, he's basically saying he wouldn't be lonely if he if he didn't experience kind of the, you know, the other side of that being like, if I didn't know what loneliness was, then I, I would be fine with with uh, whatever happened. It sounds like, you know, you kind of like breaking up with someone and yeah sure ne- you know if they never moved in together then he wouldn't know what that was like and yeah he yeah be so no, it's I, like that, yeah, okay that honestly makes mm. pretty good sense yeah yeah i dig um yeah anyways so can't make a sound cannot make a sound dude um, dude this is another one that that i think is interesting sound. because it, it starts out very subtle and very much like yep. what you would think of as the Elliot Smith you knew, but but what it goes into, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because this like is at the beginning where he says, build. I have become a silent movie, correct? Yeah, yeah. I believe so. Um, Yeah, and uh, again, it, it does start slow and it's acoustic driven. And then those layers really start to build. Then all of yes, a sudden, though, do. dude, there's like strings, the I uh, know. accentuating guitar, doubled vocals, drugs, uh, sorry, drums are going on. It's just like, well, oh my gosh. probably drugs, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's a good there's a good chance, you know, hopefully the fun kind. But um, I think he was more of a heroin guy. Yeah, he, he dabbled. He dabbled. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Dude, well, the, uh, dude, he yeah. more than dabbled. I mean, it, we'll talk yeah. about it when we do from a basement on the hill someday. But what is he? Yeah. He's got this one song where he's like, "It's Christmas time and the needles on the tree and a skinny Santa's bringing something to me." <laughs> I mean, dude, that's kind of great. He kind of throws it out there. Yeah, it does. Yeah, subtly. Um, well, the last song of the album. Bye, 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 dude. Fucking dark, man. This, I know, I mean, but I, I like it. Metal. Yeah, I, I do too. I, I, there's, it, there's something about where I, th- I feel like it is the perfect ending to this album because it just, you know how when, when they in some of the reviews and even in some of the stuff that he said, he talks about it as being very dreamlike. I feel oh. like this is one of the most dreamlike Absolutely. kind of parts of the album, and I really like it for that. I, I would love to know how it was recorded because it sounds it sounds like a piano sort of being played in in kind of like a, a bigger room, but they they mic'd it kind of distant. There's there's some space. There there is some space in between or something. I man. think I that's know. more of the effects because honestly, okay. this would be one of those things like and granted, I don't know. I wasn't there and I'm not gonna pretend that I was but I I guess if I was going to record the song I would record a very nice piano take of it where like I was happy with the instrumentation and yeah. then basically like it it's a matter of like filtering so like you right. filter okay. out some of the frequencies and like add space to it and kind of just play with that that's what I felt like because it just it feels like there's it, it is there's just there's a lot of space there. He's exploring the oh, space. Oh, explore the space, yeah. Exactly. So yeah. Well, all right, Graham. Should we Dude, we should. Um now before we Oh hmm. favorite songs? Uh, I guess if I was gonna scratch this one, I'd probably use a hypodermic needle. Um probably. Right. And no offense sadly. intended, but I mean, just in light of everything and in circumstances, that's what I'd use. So before well, we mean, get out well, the hypodermic needle, 
What is it? And, and if you don't have one, you can give me like a top three, but I'd like to know your favorite. Yeah. yeah Son of Sam and Junk Bond Trader. Those are my just mm. two favorites. Two favorites. Easily. Okay. Yeah. Well. I'm going to have to say L.A. and wouldn't mama be proud. Okay. Oh, all right. All right. Really love L.A. I mean, it's just, it's just such a good song, but I think wouldn't mama be proud. It's like, dude, I just I sing like. Yeah, I don't sing in the shower, but if I sing <laughs> in the shower, I would be singing of the great pretender. I should yeah. should think so. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I certainly. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing I live alone if I'm going to sing in the shower because when he hits that high part, I can't hit that high part. Yeah. You got to get into that falsetto, man. Uh, I uh. should sure think so. <laughs> I can sing it. I just can't sing it loud. That's where it breaks. And it's Oh, like, well, dude, yeah, that's that's a hard thing. I mean, mm-hmm. not everyone can, you know. Mm-mm. No, they I can't. can't. You know, not like plant, but. No, oh, that's why there's only one. All right, Graham. Scratch this shit. You start. I don't remember well, who did last I'm gonna time. I'm going to get but. the needle out. And um, Man, the anticipation is killing I'm me. I'm going to scratch happiness. Ooh, okay. Slash the gondola, man. All right. Any particular reason why? Dude, It's it, this might sound stupid. Like, I don't think it's a bad song. But for some reason, the intro just kind of like hits me the wrong way that ding, ding, and, okay. and, and if I'm listening to the album and I hear that intro, like I'm just it just it just hits me in a way that like if I had to scratch one, that would be it. Hit me. Come get me. I'll bite. But she bit me. Coachella, Coachella, Samini and the Salmonella. Come with me because I'm asking. I'm asking. I think I got half those words wrong, but I like that. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, all right, this is not a You're ill, but episode. I'm illa. So I actually thought when we were going through the list and I heard you talking about some songs, I thought we might be going Islanders Capitals OT zone. Into OT zone. With what however, song? However, we are not. Um, because my scratch is I better be quiet now. I can see that. I can see um, that. That it, just that just doesn't get me the same way that the other one does. Like it starts yeah. up, and I'm like, yeah. I mean, I think with it, there's it, it again. It's it is a very melancholy song, and I know I I kind of said earlier, oh, maybe the instrumentation doesn't always match his um, kind of sad words and everything. Where I think actually in this song, it it probably kind of does almost more than any song, but it's just one I could I could. If it wasn't there, would I be, you know, would, would it be missed? Eh, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. I, I love uh, Pretty Mary Kay and then Can't Make a Sound and you end with oh, bye. Dude. And it's like, hey, man. Let's yeah, go. yeah. If you kind of just skipped over it, life would go on. It would. Definitely would. So that is my scratch. I wonder what people out there, what would you yeah. scratch? Please tell us yours. We would, I, I would really like to know, especially if there are fans who... This isn't your favorite Elliott Smith album. Yeah, uh, dude, let you us know? know. Which I get. I, I get because it is different. Um, but I mean, it's not like when Dylan plugged in, but. Yeah, but at this. Yeah, I, I get that, too. But but artists, you know, if they're true artists like Elliott Smith was, they're going to make a progression. I mean, you know, <laughs> Bowie didn't just do like eight iterations of Space Oddity. Thank God. You know. People I mean, move it, on. Actually, it probably would have been pretty sweet. But anyways, yeah, yeah. But still. Yeah, he did Around the World and Back, back snap. snap. Yeah. So. All right. Well, I think that pretty much scratches this one, Grim. It's official figure eight. I would scratched. say it's official, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, all right, mm-hmm. all right. Well, everyone, please like, subscribe, comment below. I think it's time to go. The Dude and Grim Show. The Dude and Grim Show. Scratch a Track is produced by The Dude and Grim. Additional music provided by Moore and The Tims. Copyright 2021. The Dude and Grim Show.